Don't make the big mistake of not right protecting your digital evidence when you're performing a triage or examination. Hello and welcome to another Blue Monkey Forensics video. In this video, we will look at how to put media devices in the read-only mode on a Windows machine. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so it can break free. In a different video, we covered how to disable auto mounting on your Windows box. This is definitely the first thing we need to do before we can write protect the evidence media. One thing I noted is that the method only works on basic disk, essentially hard drives, but not on removable drives, which is basically USB thumb drives. So the problem still exists if we are examining evidence in the form of a USB thumb drive and we want to protect that device from any alterations. A hardware write blocker is still the preferred method. But if a hardware write blocker is not available, here are some methods which may work for you. I'm going to be using the command line, so let's launch command prompt by left clicking on the Windows Start button, then type in CMD, and then select the command prompt, and then run as administrator. This is because some of the information we want to access is restricted from a normal user. Click yes in the pop-up panel from the user account control, asking whether you want to allow this app to make changes to your device. I'm going to run regedit so we can see what is going on with some of the utilities. Another tool that we're going to use to help us see what's going on is disk management. So let's bring that up by right clicking on the Windows Start button, then select Disk Management. We can see that we currently only have the internal hard drive mounted as C colon. I'm going to disable auto mounting using a disk part utility. So from the command prompt, type disk part. And notice the change in prompt to this part to distinguish it from the standard command prompt. Here we can check on the auto mount status by typing auto mount. Since auto mount is currently enabled, let's disable it with adding the word disable. So auto mount disable. We can verify this action by looking at the reg edit in the mount MGR key. I'm also going to clear the mounted devices key by specifying the scrub option to auto mount. And we can verify this action by looking in regedit and the mount devices key. Now plug an external USB thumb drive into our system. We see that disk management automatically mounts the partition as drive D. If we use File Explorer to go to D, we can see the files on this drive and we can modify this device by adding a new folder and also deleting or adding files. So this is not good, right? Because we thought we turned on disable auto mount, but it mounted it anyways, but this is the default behavior for Windows. So let's eject that drive and change the system to treat USB devices as read only. In regedit, let's look at the key named hk underscore local underscore machine backslash system backslash current control set backslash control. And in here, we're looking for the key named storage device policies, which may not exist, but that's fine. So if we don't have that key, we can create one by right clicking on the left side of the reg edit window under control. So once we have the key named storage device policies, we're going to look for the right protect field within that key. If it doesn't exist, you can create one by right clicking on the right side of the reg edit window. Select new D word, which is a 32 bit value. And then rename it to write protect. And then double click on the name and give it a value of one, which means write protect. A zero is write enable. Now plug in an external USB thumb drive into the system. And we can see that disk management automatically mounts as drive D. But one thing to notice is that now it is marked read only. So if we use File Explorer to go into D colon, we can right click to try to add a new item, but we don't have that new menu item anymore. And then if we try to delete a folder or a specific item on D by right clicking, that delete option is also not available with a right click menu. So the thumb drive appears to be right blocked. So we have successfully right protected a USB thumb drive. Now let's plug an external USB hard drive into our system we see that disk management does not automatically mount any of the partitions because we have auto mount disabled. 
And we can use this management tool to assign a drive layer to that second partition. And then if we use File Explorer to go into D colon, we can see the files on this drive and we can modify this device by adding a new folder and also delete files. So the hard drive is not write blocked. So the registry changes that we just did earlier does not work for fixed disk, but only for removable disk. So let's eject that drive and see what we can do about that. At the disk part prompt, let's clear out the mounted device's key by typing auto mount scrub. Then let's list out the disk on the system and the volumes on the system. I'm going to type list disk and then list volume. And we only see the internal drive because that's the only one that's plugged in. Let's plug in the external hard drive and do the listing again for list disk. Now we see disk one, the one terabyte external hard drive. And let's go ahead and list out the volumes as well. Now we see volume two and three, which are partitions on disk one. And I'm going to select volume two, which, which is my large partition. I'm going to verify that I selected the proper volume by doing the list volume again. And now we have confirmation that volume two has been selected because of the asterisk on the far left. Let's take a look at the attributes for this volume. So let's type attributes volume. And the attribute of interest to us is the read only attribute, which is set to no. So let's go ahead and flip it to a yes by typing attributes, volume, set, read only. And I like to verify my actions. So I'm going to go ahead and see the attributes again by attributes, volume. And now it confirms that the volume has been set to read only. So let's test it out by manually assigning a drive letter to that volume. So I'm going to do assign letter equals D. We're going to go back to the disk management app and we see that letter D has been assigned. And if we use file explorer to see that volume letter D, we can see files on this drive. And when we try to modify this device by adding a new folder, we don't see that menu item available. Also, if we try to delete the file, we don't see that option available in the menu either. So this volume has been successfully write blocked. And if we want to, right block the entire disk, we naturally select disk one, and then set the attributes disk set read only. And now if we do the details of the disk, we see that the entire disk is set to read only. So we see that USB thumb drives are treated differently than USB hard drives. Thumb drives can be write protected with the registry key storage device policies write protect. But the hard drive volumes, however, need to be individually protected with the attributes command of the disk part utility. One of the drawbacks of the registry key write blocking method is that it blocks all USB thumb drives, not just the evidence drive. So if you're trying to write data to another thumb drive, that one is going to be blocked as well. Note that both of these methods only protect the logical volume from changes, but the media itself can still be altered at the physical level. I'm going to run CRU's write blocking validation utility to test the USB's write blocking settings. As you can see, there are a few write protocols which are able to change the disk. You may determine that you are fine with only logical level protection, but why take the risk? For your own sanity, use hardware write blocking. For more information on disabling auto mount on Windows, watch this video here. For more information on hardware write blockers, watch this video. Thanks for your time and see you again.